Adrian, a skilled hunter residing on the outskirts of a small town in Wyoming, cherished the wilderness immensely. Despite having a house in town, he constructed a shelter in the woods where he would occasionally stay overnight when his hunting excursions stretched beyond sunset. Influenced by his father, who was also a seasoned hunter, Adrian developed a deep passion for the profession, mastering the art of self-sufficiency in the wild. On a particular day, as Adrian ventured out into the woods, the sky was clear, and a gentle breeze filled the air. It seemed like the perfect day for hunting. However, Despite his efforts, he couldn't locate any prey throughout the day. Determined to return with something, Adrian continued to delve deeper into the woods. Finally, after relentless searching, he managed to capture a catch. Exhausted yet content with his dinner, he turned towards home. In that moment, Adrian realized he had become lost, and to worsen matters, nightfall was rapidly approaching. Being knowledgeable about the woods, he understood that finding his way back could take considerable time, and even then, it would be a lengthy journey back home. This presented a dangerous situation, as he could easily become prey to a wild animal. He needed to redirect his path towards his shelter and do so quickly. Despite his expertise and familiarity with the woods, it took him several hours to navigate his way to the shelter. By the time he arrived, darkness had enveloped the surroundings. Eager to ensure his safety, Adrian kindled a fire and remained on high alert throughout the night, anticipating the presence of any wild creatures. Just past midnight, a faint howl reached Adrian's ears. Recognizing the sound all too well, he dreaded its implications, a wolf's howl, close in proximity. The howl was soon accompanied by a heartrending whimper. Fear for his own well-being kept him rooted in place, yet an undeniable curiosity compelled him to investigate the source of the sound. Unable to ignore it any longer, he stepped out of his shelter and embarked on a quest to trace the origin of the whimpering. After a few strides, he discovered the source nestled beneath a bush, a lone and abandoned wolf cub. The helpless creature appeared weak and famished, incapable of surviving alone in the unforgiving wilderness. Driven by compassion and a sense of responsibility, the hunter resolved to rescue the cub and provide it with care. Returning to his shelter, he offered the tiny wolf his own dinner, forging a connection with the vulnerable creature. From that day forward, Adrian made regular visits to the woods, ensuring the wolf cub's well-being. After waiting for some time, Adrian decided to bring the wolf cub home and introduce her to his wife, Lily. Initially, Lily was frightened by the presence of a wild animal in their house and strongly objected to it. However, with persistent persuasion from Adrian, she reluctantly agreed to let the wolf stay, on the condition that it would be removed once it became self-sufficient. Surprisingly, it only took a few days for Lily to form a deep bond with the friendly cub, and they became inseparable companions. As time passed, Adrian and the wolf developed a strong connection. He diligently cared for her, imparting valuable hunting and survival skills. As the cub grew older, she began accompanying Adrian on his hunting expeditions, and together they formed a formidable team. Years flew by, and the wolf cub transformed into a magnificent and powerful creature, yet her loyalty to the hunter who had saved her as a helpless baby never wavered. They continued their hunting partnership, occasionally bringing the wolf home where Lily always welcomed her with delight. Their harmonious existence created a joyous little family. Unbeknownst to them, their lives were destined to intertwine with another family, one far less fortunate. Across town, resided a young woman named Emma, trapped in an unhappy life. Living with an unloving and burdensome uncle, she endured constant yelling and was compelled to cater to his needs while he exploited her hard-earned money for his own desires. Seeking refuge from her troubled home, Emma sought solace at the local tavern, where she frequently met with friends. It was there that one particular friendship developed into something more. However, a few months later, she realized she had merely exchanged one difficult situation for an even worse one. Contrary to Emma's initial perception, her new partner proved to be far from the kind and caring person she had hoped for. Recognizing that a lifetime with him would be just as miserable as her previous situation with her uncle, she found herself entangled in an uncomfortable and dangerous predicament. 
Desperate to escape, Emma knew she needed a clever plan. Little did she know, Adrian and his loyal she-wolf would soon become the answer to her prayers. Meanwhile, Adrian and his wolf companion continued their inseparable bond, hunting and sharing every moment together. On a particular hunting trip, their combined skills led them to a successful spree of kills, achieving remarkable results. However, as they embarked on their journey back home, an unexpected incident occurred. The she-wolf suddenly veered off and refused to acknowledge Adrian's calls. Intrigued by her unusual behavior, Adrian followed her hurried steps. It was a bitterly cold day, and darkness began to envelop the surroundings. The she-wolf raced towards the edge of the woods, on the opposite side of Adrian's house. Feeling weary and impatient, the hunter continued calling out to her, but the wolf paid no attention, fixated on a specific spot. Finally, she abruptly halted in front of a trash bag, capturing Adrian's surprise. He wondered what could have attracted the wolf's attention and whether there was something extraordinary inside. With her body shielding the contents from Adrian's view, the she-wolf meticulously tore open the trash bag and began sniffing its contents, concealing her discovery. Suddenly, the bag started to move, causing the hunter to nearly jump out of his skin. Curiosity peaked, he joined the wolf, and together they unveiled the bag's mysterious contents. To Adrian's surprise, the supposed dirt within the trash bag turned out to be old clothes and deliberately arranged rags. Yet, the true fascination lay not in these items, but in a living creature wriggling amidst them. It was a tiny, beautiful baby who immediately burst into tears upon being exposed. Adrian frantically scanned the surroundings for the baby's parents, but there was no one else in sight. Astonished that the wolf had heard the baby's cries from such a distance, he wondered if her maternal instincts had guided her to him. Tenderly, Adrian patted the wolf on the head, grateful for her presence. As Adrian observed the sobbing infant, an immediate urge to help consumed him. He cradled the baby in his arms and, with the wolf faithfully by his side, walked back home. Unbeknownst to them, the child they had discovered was none other than Emma's son. Emma, terrified of her uncle's reaction, had chosen to abandon her baby in a place where she hoped he would be found. Fortunately, Adrian came across the child swiftly. Alongside his wife, Lily, they ensured the baby's safety, providing warmth and nourishment throughout the night. The following morning, they made diligent efforts to locate the baby's parents or any other relatives who might be searching for him. Failing to find anyone, they made a heartfelt decision to adopt him as their own. They named him Jack and showered him with love and care, treating him as a cherished member of their family. News of the she-wolf's heroic act in saving a baby quickly spread throughout the town, transforming Adrian's furry companion into a legendary figure. As the story reached its heartwarming conclusion, it leaves one to ponder the question, would you ever consider adopting a wolf cub as a pet or an abandoned baby found in the woods? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us, and until next time. A snow leopard was in a hurry with a girl in its mouth. It went straight to the home of a farmer down the hill. The farmer is a disabled old man who has no hobbies except to feed some small animals. When he saw that the mother leopard he had saved picked up a girl, he was surprised and thought that the mother leopard had stolen someone else's child. The mother leopard gave her to the disabled farmer. What happened next? On the mountain lived a family, a disabled farmer, whom everyone liked to call Ben. His parents left early, leaving him alone. He was disabled by injuries in his childhood. He is poor and unmarried. One day, not far away came the cry of a female leopard foraging in the wild. It followed the sound and suddenly found a girl under a tree. The girl's cry was faint and looked pitiful. The mother leopard couldn't stand it, so she picked her up and ran down the hill. At the foot of the mountain, the mother leopard went straight to her home. Ben was cooking and was surprised to see the mother leopard with a girl in her mouth. He thought the mother leopard had stolen someone else's child, so he hastened to take the girl from the mother's mouth. He didn't think much about it at that time, but first carried the girl back to the house. 
When he got home, he found a note on the girl's dress with her date of birth and a line on it. The family hoped that the kind-hearted person would take her in and express their gratitude. Looks like her mother left it. After reading the note, Ben understood everything. The girl suffers from a rare respiratory disease that requires expensive surgery to cure. Her mother brutally sent her away when she was born and left a note. The mother leopard brought the girl back, hoping to raise her instinctively. But why did the mother leopard find Ben? Well, it turns out there is a story between them. Ben saved the leopard. Due to people's weak awareness of fire prevention and improper disposal of garbage, the forest fire was triggered and the whole forest was destroyed by the fire. The mother leopard's nest was also burned. At that time, the mother leopard had just given birth. The male leopard has not yet returned from looking for food, and several cubs are waiting to be fed in the cave. But the fire spread instantly, and the male leopard hurried back to the cave to save them. However, due to the fierce fire, the male leopard had just dragged the female leopard out and returned to the cave to save her child when the cave suddenly collapsed. So the male leopard and his children died. Seeing the present situation, the female leopard could not accept it. The mother leopard was weak and fainted near her home because of lack of strength. When she woke up again, the mother leopard found herself lying in Ben's yard with some water and food beside her. It turned out that when Ben went out, he found a charred female leopard lying next to the house. He looked distressed and planned to adopt the female leopard. When he got home, Ben carefully smeared the herb on the mother leopard and changed her dressing every day. In this way, the mother leopard finally recovered after several months of rest and recuperation at home and returned to the mountains. After that, the mother leopard took the girl back and gave it to the disabled farmer to raise. In view of Ben's kindness, the mother leopard brought the girl she found in the forest. It knew Ben wouldn't leave her alone. Ben looked at the thin little girl who cried faintly and felt sorry for her, so he took her in. After making the decision, Ben and the leopard mother raised the girl together. Later, although he was very poor, he bought a lot of baby milk powder and toys. He felt that from the moment he held the girl, he regarded her as his own daughter. Ben named the girl Amy. Amy's health is going from bad to worse because her respiratory disease has never been cured. In order to cure Amy, Ben had to find a way to raise money to pay for the medical expenses. However, it was difficult for Ben to get hundreds of thousands of yuan, and he could not earn a part-time job by himself. However, Ben learned from a local herbalist that there was a precious herb on the edge of the cliff. If he can pick it up, he can make money. After hearing this, Ben thought it was feasible, so he went up the mountain to collect medicine the next day with tools and without hesitation. He knew it was dangerous. Worried about the danger on the road, he took the mother leopard up the mountain. So they came to the edge of the cliff. They searched carefully near the edge of the cliff. With great effort, they finally found that there were a large number of medicinal materials growing on a cliff, exactly like what they had seen. Ben excitedly led the leopard toward the cliff. He walked cautiously to the herb. He was overjoyed when he finally came to the place where the medicinal materials were planted. He thought Amy could finally be saved. Ben quickly picked herbs. It wasn't long before his bag was full of medicine. Just as Ben and the mother leopard were about to leave, they suddenly found an herb on the cliff, several times larger than the one they had picked before. Ben thought that if he could pick that herb back, he would certainly make a lot of money. So he put the bag of medicine on the ground, ready to climb the cliff to collect the medicine. But just as he was about to catch the herb, he accidentally stepped on a loose stone. Then his body fell down. Unfortunately, Ben did not fall directly, but was supported by a big tree on the cliff. Seeing this, the snow leopard jumped off the cliff to save Ben. Ben soon calmed down in the panic that he almost fell off a cliff and died. He tried to get the snow leopard to throw the vine on the cliff in front of him. Snow Leopard soon understood Ben's intention. He swung the vine in front of Ben with his mouth, clung to the vine, and slowly dragged Ben up. After returning home, 
Ben first gave medicine to the snow leopard, and then sold the collected herbs to the medicine supplier. After getting the money, Ben sent Amy to the provincial hospital for surgery. After that, Ben and Snow Leopard were busy taking care of Amy after the operation. Seeing that Ben had less and less food, Amy was waiting to feed the Snow Leopard. Ben immediately ran to the mountain. In the evening, the Snow Leopard came back with a hair in his mouth. Ben looked at the food brought by the Snow Leopard and was as happy as a child. After all, he was so busy taking care of Amy at that time that he hadn't eaten meat for a long time. That night, Ben killed the hare and made soup for Amy. After that, the snow leopard often goes up the mountain to prey on a large number of prey such as hares and pheasants. Every time Ben opens the door, he can see a lot of prey. Ben boiled all these prey into soup and fed them to Amy. Amy grew up under the joint care of Ben and snow leopard. Many years later, Amy grew up and had a very close relationship with Ben. But shortly after Amy's biological parents arrived, Amy always thought about her adoptive father and refused to go with her biological parents. Amy is getting old enough to get married. That year, Amy went out to work to earn money. Ben missed her so much that he often called her to ask how she was doing. One day, Amy told Ben that she was in love and wanted to marry her boyfriend. Ben was both excited and surprised to hear the news. Amy is finally getting married. He is very happy. But if Amy gets married, who will take care of Ben? He doesn't care about that, he just wants Amy to get better. If Amy leaves, he will take care of himself. After all, he lived alone for many years. He thinks Amy's happiness is the most important. Considering the problems to be faced in the future, the villagers told Amy's parents-in-law about it before Amy got married. They said that Ben worked hard to raise Amy, and although they were not related by blood, it was her duty to take care of him. So Amy has been taking care of Ben since she got married. They lived together with Amy's parents-in-law. At first they had a good relationship, but after a while, Amy's parents-in-law didn't like it. It was embarrassing to see Amy's constant quarrel with them, so he returned to the village alone. Amy's mother-in-law knew she was wrong and said they would send him living expenses on time every month. Ben agreed. Although Ben doesn't live in their house, he has living expenses every month. Amy's parents-in-law think they have no obligation to raise a man at all. Ben was in good health at that time, although he was old and needed to be taken care of. But that's Amy's business, not Amy's in-laws. Amy felt that they had broken their promise, couldn't stand it, and went back to Ben. Later, she worked hard to save a lot of money to start a company. After that, she not only made money and bought a lot of things for Ben and Snow Leopard, but also set up a foundation to raise abandoned babies and lonely elderly people in society.